the next cycle. As a financial advisor, my career and my life are devoted to helping people to realize their financial dreams. It is a very fulfilling occupation. However, it can also be frustrating because usually I am preaching to the converted. I am helping people who want to be helped. And my real target should be those who need to be helped. Therefore, through this medium, I'm taking the opportunity to address my fellow Jamaicans, particularly young people who need to become financially literate. It is estimated that there are some 1,500 homeless people on the streets of our country. That is the tip of the iceberg in terms of poverty in our society. At the same time, Jamaica has a national debt greater than what Jamaicans produce annually. As a result, we have become dependent on loans and an international monetary fund agreement to maintain our current levels of consumption. What that really means on average is that over the years, we have been consuming more than we produce. And if we want to achieve our National Vision 2030 target to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, do business and raise families, then we need to encourage financial literacy at all levels in our country. For example, a liberal arts student graduating from a university this year, let us call her Janelle. She will probably secure a job with a take-home salary of approximately $100,000 per month. If Janelle adopts what is called the 70-10-10-10 solution, she would be on her way developing a basic management plan. She would be using 70% of her income to meet her monthly expenses, saving 10% in a financial institution to gain interest, investing 10%, and have the other 10% for charity or emergencies, and so on. Therefore, it would be proper for Janelle to set up a budget. In that budget, she would list all of her expenses, savings, and investment options, which in would include items such as rent, monthly utilities, food, transportation, and important personal items to be acquired. If Janelle is carrying a student loan burden of perhaps $1.7 million, her loan repayment could come to $15,000 monthly if she's trying to pay down her loan more quickly. Additionally, if she moves to live on her own, she could easily find herself paying $20,000 per month in rent, another $20,000 for food and transportation, and her utilities may also cost another $10,000 per month. With nearly 70% of her income going towards her basic expenses, she has enough to cover her incidental expenses and will be able to use the other 30% to save, invest, and contribute to charity or hold for a rainy day. As a bright young woman, Janelle would want to go on to do her master's and along with her partner, in some 20 years, she could own her own home and have two children. Her income will have increased, but so will her debt obligations. Janelle should also ensure that she joins her company's pension plan and contribute the maximum amount allowed. She should also contribute to the National Insurance Scheme, have health insurance, and she should also consider protecting her assets with other insurance policies. Today, some Jamaicans find themselves in real terms to be less financially secured than their parents or grandparents. Why? Members of our older generations were more frugal they knew how to live within their means. In addition, 
some Jamaicans living overseas are astonished to discover that foreigners who live in countries that are more economically stable than Jamaica live far less extravagant lives than we can imagine. For example, the average Barbadian lives in a home which is smaller than that of their Jamaican counterpart, or that the average European would not consider it a soul shattering to ride a bicycle or take the bus to work. Just as Jamaica is bringing its spending in line with its income, so will Janil and all of us need to start making some hard choices. Begin by making a budget and make reasonable allocations for savings, basic expenses, and lifestyle costs. Now, start taking control of your life.